that is close to 10% of the population who are not working, who are not productive, who are not engaged in building anything. The men who are around here who literally just hang out. These are really young men. And this is one of the things that I feel is gonna to happen to these men. They're gonna get older and they're not gonna have any viable skills. It's not just men, there's a bunch of women who are trying to do the same thing. But I'm addressing men because from a social standpoint, men are the leaders of society. What's up guys, I wanna say thank you to the people who bought training, thank you to the people who are about to buy training, and thank you to the nerd tribe for your well-constructed comments. In this video, the state of the American male, 30 million men who could be working are not working. Let me go ahead and tell you about a situation where I live. It's one of the reasons that I've decided to move next year. Once again, my decision to move was made even before I resigned my lease. I just didn't want to get in the current real estate market because it's kind of crazy right now. But there are men in my building who make a living hanging out. Now, what do I mean by this? They're social media personalities and all they do is go out and eat, hang out, make videos talking about this and drive their cars kind of crazy. That's all that they do. That's it. These are men. This is part of a cycle. Dave Ramsey did an episode talking about 7 million men were not working. It's much higher than that because one of the things that you have to understand is that unemployment in the black community is always higher than it is in the white community. So when you add up all of these people, all of these men, I pegged the number at 30 million men who could be working, but are not working. And I understand, I acknowledge it. There are people on social media who are making millions. It's 100% true. I would peg that as the top 1%. Let me give you some YouTube facts. There's only out of that 117 million YouTube channels, 17 million with 10,000 or more subscribers. There's only out of that 117 million YouTube channels, there's only 320,000 with 100,000 subscribers. And there's like 32,000 YouTube channels with a million or more subscribers. And then when you start getting up to 50 million, there's like 12, and I think when you get to 100 million, that's five YouTube channels. But let's just kind of hang around that 320 million, 320,000 out of 117 million. That's not even 1%. So the top, 0.5% because I feel that these numbers are the same, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Instagram, the top 0.5% social media people make 95% of the money. And one of the things like me, uh, I'm on track this year to do 75,000 from YouTube AdSense. And to me, that's not a lot of money. But I was watching Meg Squats. She's a YouTuber here on YouTube, and she has a channel with 510,000 subscribers. And she was putting out how much money she made from YouTube. It literally blew my mind. She's only made $22,000 from a YouTube channel that gets millions of views. Only 22,000. I'm just sitting here like, now I have multiple channels because that 75,000 is coming from this channel, is coming from the corporate game, and it's coming from another channel so that's part of the reason but this channel by itself has done 50,000 50,000 already we're not even December that's why I said we're on our way to 75,000 maybe 80,000 and this channel with 139,000 subscribers is in the top 1% 
of YouTube channels, top 1%. So where am I going with this? Where am I cooking with this? You have all of these people, all of these people who are flocking to TikTok. TikTok is where everyone is running to and Instagram is TikTok first and YouTube. Now that's really something that's interesting because I saw a guy who's on TikTok. He's a phot photographer, DDG something photography. And he's doing better on YouTube than he did on TikTok because he only has 179,000 followers on TikTok, but he's has close to a million on YouTube and he's done this in about four months. So he's doing much better on YouTube. And I've seen this, a lot of people who do well on TikTok typically don't do well on YouTube. And a lot of people who do well on YouTube typically don't do well on TikTok because it's a different social media platform that requires a different level of content. But once again, everyone is looking at Graham Stephan. Everyone is looking at all of these people who have run to YouTube. And once again, there are people, I'm one of them. There are people who are making millions of dollars a year from YouTube, but I just gave you some framework. Let me share something with you. I've started a new YouTube channel and I am not letting you guys know because let me explain to you how the YouTube algorithm works. And I figured this out on this channel and what used to be Savage Finance and what used to be the corporate game. I have the same audience. These channels had different level of content. So I shouldn't have the same audience should but I do, and I'm gonna explain to you why. When you go ahead and you have a YouTube channel and then you let your old audience know about your new YouTube channel, if a bunch of people head to that new YouTube channel, the YouTube algorithm will say, oh, this is the group of people who likes this content. So the YouTube algorithm will go out and find more like-minded people. For me to develop a new audience, I can't let, and once again, I have some really awesome people over here. I have some amazing uh, people over here, and I really wish that I could just put out where I'm at and let you guys know, but what's gonna happen is I have a huge segment of fools. I have a huge segments of idiots. I, and if I go ahead and let you guys know, guess who, what these idiots, they're gonna run to the new channel. Literally, I've had clowns, idiots, go from channel to channel to leave comments because they see me out here doing something. Because once again, at 139,000 subscribers, I am in the top 1% of YouTubers. I'm in that top 320,000, which is not even of one, I'm not even, I'm in the top 0.5% at 139,000 subscribers. And you know, to, and like, I'm, I'm excited because this new YouTube channel, I'm starting 100% from scratch. And I've been thinking maybe two years from now, I may let you guys know it's a brand new YouTube channel. I have one, two, three videos, and I've got five subscribers. So it's going pretty slow and it's a week old. But I gotta go through this because here's the thing. There's so many people, and I'm going somewhere with this. There's so many people who are trying to make money off of social media. Case in point, the men who are around here who literally just hang out. They don't have any purpose. Now, this is the thing. These are really young men. And this is one of the things that I feel is gonna to happen to these men. They're gonna get older and they're not gonna have any viable skills. Cause here's the thing, the average lifespan of a YouTuber is five to seven years. And literally I've gone, there's a whole bunch of people who were literally blowing up last year, two years, you know, two years ago, they taken the chill pill. Cause you know, YouTube can be a lot of work. So, you know, for me to have a 14 year old YouTube channel, to be making money from YouTube for 14 years is not normal. It's not normal. If you go ahead and look at all of the YouTube stars of 10 years ago. You go to their channels, their channels are dead. They're, they're, some of these folks haven't posted content for years. This is where I'm going. Many people are trying to 
duplicate the success of their favorite YouTuber, TikToker, Instagram personality. And I'm, about, I'm getting ready to say something. You know, in college football, you have Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, people with exceptional God-given talent. You know, you can work out like Bryce Young. But can you play like Bryce Young? No. You can work out like C.J. Stroud. But can you play like C.J. Stroud? No. You can work out like, I forget this uh, linebacker that plays for LSU. He's a beast. What I'm saying is there's a number of people on YouTube who have exceptional gifts and in TikToker. And there's this girl. I'm going to give you her name. Her name is Vivacious Honey. And she has a TikTok channel and a YouTube channel. And she does very well on both. And she's getting ready to launch a clothing line. This girl is extremely talented. Extremely talented. Once again, just like movie stars and athletes and basketball players and football players, you have a group that's the elite. And here's the thing. If you make it to the NFL or the NBA or Major League Baseball, or soccer at that top level, you're not normal. You're exceptional. Now, where am I going with this? You have a ton of people who are trying to become social media stars, where essentially you become the factory. You become the content producer. And this is one of the reasons, and I'm addressing the men. It's not just men. There's a bunch of women who are trying to do the same thing. But I'm addressing men because from a social standpoint, men are the leaders of society. And we have a bunch of men who are not leading. They're living with their girlfriends. They're living with their mom or there may be three or four of them living in one apartment. This lack of progress, this lack well, let's, let's go ahead. It's deeper than that. When I was a kid, I could not wait to turn a certain age so I could get a job. I desperately wanted to work. Every opportunity as a young man that I could put myself in a situation where I could be working and making some money, I did that. That drive that deep burning desire to be better, to do better, to improve yourself, it is absent in these 30 million men. Like, once again, um, I see content like TikTok. For me personally, the majority of content on TikTok is insipid. It's stupid. It's like people are actually watching this, which speaks to society as a whole. Because here's the thing, TikTok views are not the same as YouTube views. And I've heard a few people who have gone ahead. It's like one guy who was doing really well on TikTok. He only made like 300 bucks. And he says, my YouTube channel, which is one tenth the size of his TikTok channel, was making 10 times more money. So YouTube views from, you know, are definitely more durable, uh, more substantial. But here's this thing. These men are not about trying to build anything. And oh, heaven forbid talking about getting married and having a family. Whoa, 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 whoa. I can't support myself, let alone me getting married to some woman and trying to, oh, is she gonna be looking at me to go to work? She's gonna be looking at me to lead? She's gonna be looking at me to support? No, 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 no miss me with that. So we have a nation, 30 million men, that is close to 10% of the population who are not working, who are not productive, who are not engaged in building anything because they are glued, they're glued to this. They're trying to make it happen on this. They're trying to become a social media, like literally the things I have seen are just stupid. And with that lack of drive, there was a study. Men are not only not working, men compared to men of 30 years ago, men are actually physically weaker. They're physically weaker. They have low testosterone, much lower. And these men are becoming women at a hormonal level. So where are we going with this? We already have a problem. 
worldwide, I know there's seven, almost eight billion people around the world, right? But in westernized nations such as United States, Europe, China, Japan, we are not reproducing at a level to replace ourselves. So, you know, in India and Mexico, yeah, they're having, in South America, they're having kids like crazy. But in the westernized countries, we're not reproducing enough to replace ourselves. And what this spells for the future is a worker shortage. We're gonna have a worker shortage. And right now, we have a shortage of carpenters, masons, electricians, plumbers. Once again, because these men don't want to do those jobs. It's not that the work isn't available. The work is there. These men don't want to do that because literally they're glued to this and they're watching their favorite Instagrammer, YouTuber, or TikToker. You know, uh, there's this chick, I'm not mentioning any names because um, I think her content is a little lopsided because she makes most of her money from social media versus actually running a business. And she's doing, you know, she's young, she's very young, she's in her 20s. And she's doing the the TikTok the you the TikTok thing and the YouTube thing. She's going on these v beautiful vacations, taking videos of her in these beautiful vacation spots, and she is one of the 0.5 percent. She makes a lot of money from YouTube. She makes money from Facebook, and she's making money from YouTube. So with that notion that you can make a lot of money. And I'm gonna be 100% honest here. I don't work a 40 hour week. I really don't. I'm about to start and I'm gonna tell you why. For the last five years, man, like last seven, I've been working maybe 20, 30 hours a week. And there's been periods where I wasn't even doing that. So why would I go from that to working 40 hours a week or more? I have a plan to share with my, my plan. My plan is to pay cash for a house. Now, I could do that now. However, I always do this. Instead of spending the money I have, I come up with a plan to make more money. Just that's what I did with the Porsche. It's, you know, I could have got the Porsche when I wanted it, but I didn't want to let that money go. So I just went out and made some more money. And this is the kind of situation I don't want to let that money go. So my plan, and once again, I am 56 years of age and this is my 10 year plan. Go ahead, buy a house, pay cash, and then create another business that I can systemize and that's going to be my retirement. I am not super keen on investments because right now a lot of people who have investments have seen their portfolios lose 30 to 50 percent depending upon their allocation of their portfolio. And last thing I want to do is be in a position where I'm going to retire and my portfolio drops 30, 50 percent. I don't want to be in that position. So what I'm going to do is what I call the perpetual company. I'm going to create a company that can run with minimum input for me. So instead of depending upon dividends or a 4% return or all this other stuff, I will have an active company that will enable me to make money that will enable me to live the lifestyle that I've grown accustomed to. So that's gonna be my retirement plan. And I've given myself 10 years to put this together. So I got a lot of time because typically when I give myself such a long runway, I usually get it done in two to four years. So we will see. So I am now working more. I'm doing more because uh, like I tell you, this new YouTube channel, honestly, I'm excited. I'm excited because, you know, I got addicted to, hey, I started a new YouTube channel. I come over here and it's like, hey guys, I have a new YouTube channel and literally, I have seen people who have started after I did and literally leave me in the dust. And it's the audience. I got the same audience with a few people I consider to be complete fools. Uh, I'm just sitting there because when you go on your YouTube dashboard, you can see 
what the bulk of your audience and who else they're watching. And this is how I know, like I said, I have some really good people. I have some great viewers. I have my nerd tribe. I'm really thankful for you guys, but I've got a lot of clowns. I got a bunch of people who are 100% hell bent on foolishness. And for me to tap into another YouTube audience, I had to start that channel and I couldn't let you guys know what, what, it, what, what I'm doing or where I'm going. This is gonna be a self case study of me practicing what I preach. Because once I get this channel going, I'm gonna start another YouTube channel and I'm not gonna let people know about it. And once again, it's gonna be really hard to find. It's gonna be really, really hard to find. There are channels on YouTube that have been on YouTube for 10 years that I've never seen one of their videos. So unless you're in that intended audience that I'm crafting for this channel, you're not gonna find it. You're not gonna see it. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the work. I'm looking forward to building out those new YouTube channels. I'm looking forward to being a man. Cause to be a man, you gotta put in the work. I am just so surprised at the number of men who just do not want to work. They just simply do not want to put in the work. They don't want to do anything. And they have this fantasy of being the next social media star that can make a lot of money from just producing content. I've given you the numbers. For you to make, like, once again, at 139,000 subscribers, I'm only making, I'm only going to make 75K. That is more money than 95% of YouTubers make. And that's just 75K. And when you get to like Graham Stephan, millions, 99.5% of YouTubers are not making that kind of money. Men, you need to go to work because this whole notion of people who are just refuse, it's an absolute refusal to work. This is where we are. This is the state of men in America right now. And also a lot of this started with moms. Once again, we have the highest segment of single mothers in American history right now. This is the largest percentage of single mothers that we've ever had. And guess what? It's growing. And to some degree, this is also partly the blame of men. Men getting a chick pregnant, walking away. Once again, lack of leadership, lack of responsibility. And in 2023, this is going to get much, much worse.